So this worksheet has loads of connections with the work that you're doing in GCSE chemistry. So inside the atom we've got protons which are positive, neutrons which are neutral and also these negative electrons. Again you'll have learnt all about these when you've been doing your work on electricity. So inside the atom we've got the nucleus which has got the protons and neutrons in it and orbiting around this we have the electrons in different shells. But sometimes what we can have is if you energise that atom we can actually get the electrons to change the shells or the energy levels that they're in. Now when they're de-energised or de-excited they drop down to a lower shell, often called its ground state in its lowest energy level, and then if you excite the atom then what we can do is get the electrons to go up to a higher energy level. And atoms like to have a full outer shell. This is why in chemistry they're always going on about ionic or covalent bonding, maybe things are losing or gaining electrons to get a full outer shell, or maybe they're just sharing them. So what we're interested in though really is what's going on in the very middle when it comes to physics. So um, we've got the atomic number which is the letter Z and that's the number of protons and the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons inside the nucleus of that atom. And if it's neutrally charged then the amount of positive protons equals the number of negative electrons inside an atom. But there are two definitions of things you need to know about so don't get them confused. Isotopes these have a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. So it might be the same type of chemical element, it behaves chemically in the same way, but it has a different mass number because of a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. Whereas if we've got an ion, that is a charged atom, so it might be positive or negatively charged because it's gained or lost electrons. And then finally, what's actually the model that we've sort of developed over time? Well initially they thought that protons and electrons were all kind of distributed evenly throughout the atom. And then as science developed, we found that if we fired alpha particles at a thin sheet of gold leaf, most of them would go straight through, which means that the atom must mostly be largely empty space. And also, if it's mainly empty space, then all the mass must be concentrated somewhere. And because some of these positive alpha particles were deflected by more than 90 degrees, that meant they actually bounced back because they were repelled by an, the same charge. So the positive alpha could only have been repelled by a positive central core to the atom, which is the nucleus. So that one there, um, again, hopefully that's stuff you might have covered in chemistry. If not, then this is going to be really useful for your chemistry lessons, as well as for the stuff you need to know about for GCSE physics.